Right now, it's all over the place. Uh, people wearing bandanas, uh, wearing KN95 masks. Some people wear N95 masks. There isn't really a good uh, understanding, good information to the public for the type of mask that they should wear to protect them uh, very well. They are the new norm. Face coverings, the government, health experts, and now big corporations are all urging everyone to wear them in order to slow the spread of COVID-19. But with so many different kinds, or in my case, so many different layers, it's hard to know which ones are safest. From medical grade to homemade masks that can actually be made out of old jeans, in this case at TV Extra, we talk to experts about how efficient all of these actually can be. <laughs> You've likely heard of the N95 mask. They are made in America and are designed for hospital use to protect our healthcare workers and patients. After seeing a shortage of N95, the Food and Drug Administration approved emergency use of KN95, a version of the mask made in China. There are subtle uh, differences between the two. For example, the KN95 efficiency is 94%. The N95 efficiency is 95%. Uh, but because the flow rate is different, uh, a KN95 or a proper KN95 based on our work uh, will meet the N95 uh, requirement very nicely, uh, except when it's a counterfeit. Dr. Ahmad Khalik is the program manager at the Southwest Research Institute right here in San Antonio. Soon after the COVID-19 pandemic began, the organization went from testing engine emissions to testing emissions of particles through masks. We, we've done a lot of work uh, on KN95 uh, masks where they did not meet the requirement and some of them, they, uh, they have an efficiency way much lower than the 95% deficiency. We tested about 13 different brands of KN95 uh, masks. 73% uh, of those failed uh, the requirement and the efficiency ranged from 63% to 97 and 98% for the K95 that passed. Since the start of the mask shortage, there have been more and more of these masks on the market. The FDA uh, listed the specific manufacturers uh, of the KN95 uh, masks that are authorized to sell those uh, in the United States. Uh, but the problem, again, there are a lot of companies uh, that uh, counterfeit uh, those masks, and it's a very difficult to control. Dr. Khalik says healthcare systems are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on fake masks. That's why the Institute is offering to test how well those masks work within just three days. We have samples that can be sent to us. Uh, we can check uh, those and uh, provide you with the information to, to go ahead with your pr procurement or not. And even if you have masks in the inventory, before you distribute them to, uh, to nurses and doctors uh, that can be potentially exposed, we can test those uh, on an efficiency basis and also flow resistance uh, basis uh, to see if they need the requirement before they are used. Experts say both of these kinds of masks should be saved for healthcare workers. Uh, the surgical masks and ultimately the N95 mask are highly effective in both transmitting and receiving COVID-19, but that's not generally recommended for somebody who's out in the community. When it comes to the average Joe, experts like Dr. Fred Campbell say the best option could come from material you already have. According to a study at Florida Atlantic University, well-fitted masks made from two layers of tightly stitched cotton fabric are the best when it comes to blocking the droplets from coughs. The idea of wearing a cloth face covering uh, is just a great common sense and extremely humanitarian kind of thing to do. Uh, if you're doing that, then you're being a great American. Dr. Campbell is with UT Health San Antonio. He recommends masks with two or more layers, and he says one good option for a third layer might actually surprise you. The kind of filter that you would want to put in a face covering would be one with a heavy cloth, such as 
denim, for instance, which you could uh, cut out of an old pair of jeans and would work beautifully in terms of being a filter because it reduces transmission so much more than just a light piece of cloth. So it may be time to put those nostalgic skinny jeans to use. In a simulation using a mannequin, manual pump, smoke generator, and a laser, a two-layer stitch cloth mask proved to be the most effective when up against cone style and bandana style coverings. These masks seem to be the most common and tests showed that droplets only travel two and a half inches with it on. For the sake of comfort, some people are also turning to valve masks. My understanding of these valve masks is that it makes it much easier to, to exhale, which is somewhat uncomfortable when you're wearing a mask. But a recent truss index debunked the idea that these masks offer two-way protection. They're not designed for me to prevent exhaling potentially COVID-containing uh, droplets. The folded handkerchief and bandana styles proved least effective, with leakage expanding from one to three feet. If someone with no face covering coughs or sneezes, those droplets can travel up to eight feet around them. People are constantly bombarded with uh, advertisements about various types of masks, but the cloth face covering again with, uh, with a filter layer uh, is the very best common type of face covering that I could advise. Dr. Campbell says wearing any face mask with multiple layers can reduce the chance of transmitting COVID-19 by up to half. So whatever the mask you choose, remember it's also important to wash it regularly. Make sure to wash them just like you wash your hands. For this case at TV Extra, I'm Sarah Costa. Case at 12 News. Hey, if you like what you just saw, get more local news and original programming by downloading the KSAT TV app on your streaming device, your smart TV, or even your phone. The KSAT TV app. Download it for free and get local.